Hello Crafty Crandall fam! Today I am filming a video that comes requested from one of my subscribers. I am doing a plein air painting video, so this is where I am going to go out and paint in, you know, nature. <laughs> um, it won't really be in nature because I'm not going to be like right next to nature, but I'm going to be going to a park and sitting at a bench and just painting what I see around me. Normally when I paint outside, I will paint whatever it is that I want to paint. I won't necessarily capture what it is that I'm seeing while I'm doing it. So this will be a little bit different for me and I'm excited to go ahead and do it. First though, I wanted to show you guys the supplies that I'll be using to create this painting. As you can see, I've got one of them right here. That is my handy dandy water spray bottle. And now let's just quickly roll into the rest of them and then I will see you again on site. <laughs> All right, so I am going to be using the Mihimi Mia gouache, the jelly gouache that I hauled in my last video. This will be my first time using it on a proper piece of artwork, and I am excited to do so. Unfortunately, this case is so big that these don't fit well into my usual travel backpack, but I'm going to do it anyway because I want to use them, and I am going to a place that has, like, picnic tables, so I should be able to lay it out there, and it won't be too much of a hassle. Next, I'm bringing my Field Watercolor Journal by Handbook Paper Company. I love this thing. Uh, I'm almost done filling it up, and so hopefully I'll do a sketchbook tour soon. You've seen a good portion of it if you've watched all of my videos, so it won't be too much of a surprise. And obviously, we will be filling in at least one page of it today. I then have here some clips. It is very windy because I'll be going near the water, so I need these to keep the paper from rustling around. Like I said, I got my spray bottle here for water. My other water receptacles are right here. So I've got a blender bottle that comes with two uh, stackable cup things. So I'm gonna use these for water, for paint water, and then this will have additional fresh water in case I want to dump this water and get new water. I have an assortment of paint brushes here and then an assortment of different writing and drawing implements, which if you watched my go-to travel art supply video, you would have seen there. I've got two different erasers, a kneaded eraser, and a regular rubber eraser, and then of course my coffee, which is actually a chai tea latte with pumpkin cold foam if you're interested. Um, highly recommend, it's a great beverage. So with that, I will catch you guys outside for this plein air painting video. So unfortunately, because of the wind, I wasn't able to take any voiceover at location because it was so windy and the water was making a lot of noise, and so I didn't think it would be the best audio consumption for you. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what my workstation looked like and the scene that I am going to be painting, which is in front of me. It was absolutely beautiful and such an amazing time. Um, I really love just sitting and painting or sitting and drawing, and this was kind of a new experience doing so of like what was in front of me. I have tried to do this before, never really having any good results. So let's see if we can hopefully achieve something a little bit better this time. I did a quick time lapse of my sketch so that you could see the whole process from start to finish. And then I set to work painting. <laughs> It was a little bit difficult because I had to kind of use my uh, crane hook arm thing to record and the only place that I could find to clamp it well was on the leg of the table right up in front of me. So in order to reach the water, I had to kind of like reach across the screen. So I've tried to cut out all the bits where I was reaching for water so that my arm is not distracting you during the painting. One more quick view of the scene ahead, and then I will start the painting. I first started with the sky. I wanted to do all of the large blocks of color first. That was my approach for this painting, and I started with a pretty watered down gouache so that I could build it up after the fact. Um, I really liked this method. I think this method worked pretty well as far as like using this particular gouache for the first time and kind of just getting used to it. It was nice and easy to just start with the big blocks of color and then move into more detailed work after that. <laughs> I like to just start with my big uh, square brush that I brought and then eventually moved into using a smaller square brush and then a filbert head brush, which was a size two. 
here you see that I'm trying to get some uh, mist going from the uh, gradient in the sky because off in the distance you could see close to the horizon that it was rather misty and white and then the sky gradiated darker as it got you know higher up from the horizon and so I tried to capture this in the painting and overall I'm not mad at how it turned out I think that it worked well despite the fact that you can see I am lifting some of the paint here when I'm trying to move the white around and so technique wise I think I still have a long ways to go as far as understanding and better utilizing gouache um, coming from more of a watercolor background I've found it somewhat difficult to really get the technique down so this is great practice and I highly encourage you to try this <laughs> go out paint what's in front of you it was at around this time that I actually had a gentleman stop by and say hello and ask to see my painting. And so if you're going to paint outside, that is something to be aware of out in public. Um, people are curious. People want to know, oh, that's odd. Someone's drawing over there or, you know, maybe they're an artist too and they just want to see a fellow artist's work. So the gentleman that stopped by was very kind. He asked if I was watercoloring. I told him it was gouache, so similar. <laughs> we had a brief conversation and then he actually let me pet his adorable dog, Raven. And so that was a treat for me that I really appreciated. So this was a great experience, both getting to paint outside, enjoy the sunlight and the scenery, and also get to meet some new people in the community and kind of share my love of art with them as well. So just be aware of that if you are going to paint in public, you might be asked by someone what you're painting and I would highly encourage you to engage with them and be very kind and just enjoy, you know, meeting other people in addition to getting to practice your craft and hopefully improving while also enjoying the great outdoors and nature. Next, I started color blocking the water, and this was a little bit difficult because parts of the water I knew were going to be covered up by trees, but I couldn't really tell which method would work better as far as filling in the trees and then trying to fill in the water behind them or filling in all the water and then, and then painting the trees on top of them. That's the great thing about gouache is that it layers, so you can paint darker things and then lighter things on top of it, but... To be honest, it's just not how my brain works. Like I can't conceive of that as readily because I'm so used to having to conserve the whites. So it's definitely a learning curve and it's something that I'm really working on as far as trying to figure out what technique works best for gouache. So here again with the trees, you see that I start with a lighter color and then I will end up painting in the shadows with a darker color on top of it. You will also notice the fly in the lower left hand corner. This fly is like going to land probably 8, 9, 10, 12, a million times throughout this video. <laughs> he was definitely interested in the painting and that is yet another thing to be aware of that, you know, you're painting outside, <laughs> there will be bugs. I had a bee fl flying around me for a little while so I had to swat him away and it was just you know, one of those things that, yes, it's a nuisance, but it is all part of the experience. <laughs> On to painting the trees. Let me tell you, trees are not my favorite thing to paint. <laughs> they never have been. I really hope that someday they will be, though, because I love how trees look. I love painting them. There's something that I am really fascinated by, and there's a specific tree that I've been wanting to paint for years, and I never have, so maybe someday I will get the courage to go out and paint that one specific tree because it's really cool. It has a lot of really cool motion to it. But in the meantime, I got some practice on these trees. <laughs> I then set about just capturing the shadows because I realized there was no lighting really in this painting yet. And I wanted to capture the deep shadows that the trees were casting over the, the scenery. I will just note that the light is coming from basically the lower right hand corner of the painting because the sun was behind my right shoulder while I was painting it. Obviously the sun is up in the sky so it was casting downward and onto the scene. Um, so hopefully I did a decent job of capturing the shadows here. Uh, I did find it somewhat difficult to figure out the right shade as I think in reality the shade should have been more muted and dulled down but basically I added some nice deep navy blue to the green shade that I had and just hoped for the best with that. 
I then moved on to the foreground just to paint the uh, fence that was in front of me. <laughs> Again, it was hard to mix a shade for this because the wood itself had been very, very uh, weathered. And so it was almost like a light gray tone. And so I don't think I did the best job of capturing that here. Uh, but alas, what are you going to do? Um, I, I did my best. <laughs> I think there are a lot of points of improvement on here um, and you know that's just something that I need to explore for myself and get better at uh, but overall I think this was a really fun experience. I sped some of the footage up so that you didn't have to sit through me doing the entire painting though I did want to kind of capture certain parts of the painting in more depth so You'll see a mix of both sped up footage and real time footage here. For the most part, the beginning was all real time, and now from here on out, there will be kind of a mix for you. <laughs> there was a tree off to the left that you saw when you did when I did the pan, and so I captured that. And then I set upon doing the leftmost tree as far as you know the most in front of me scene. <laughs> um, this tree I was so excited about at the beginning, I thought I did a good job of capturing it, and then unfortunately I ruined it, <laughs> which you will see here in a second. I sped it up as soon as I started to ruin it because I got really frustrated. <laughs> and again, trees are something that I really need to improve on. If you have any tips on painting trees, I would really, really greatly appreciate it. Uh, it's just something that I've always struggled with, and I've watched a bunch of tutorials on how different people paint trees. Um, I think it's uh, Danny Hawk. Danny Hawk has a really good one, and then there's other illustrators who just do a great job, and they're all very different, so I've had a difficult time finding a methodology that works well for me personally. I like to use this little tapping motion with my brush. I think that helps to add a lot of texture to the trees. So that's kind of the starting point that I give myself to try to add some definition. And then I rely solely on the color changes to block in shapes. And I just don't know if that is the right way to do it. If I should do a flat wash over the top and then try to add the dimension with the brush technique or not. Um, but again, I would really welcome your feedback. If any of you have any tips on that, <laughs> that would be fantastic. So as I said, I definitely, definitely ruined this tree here in the end, um, but it is what it is. <laughs> As I moved into the focal point tree, or the tree directly behind the monument or um, larger headstone, I'm not really sure what it is, um, I actually started to try a different methodology for this type of tree uh, because it was more puffy than the other tree. <laughs> um, and so what I did is I started with all of the, the shadows. I blocked in the shadows first. And I think that this worked a lot better. So I blocked in all the shapes of like the puffs of tree with the shadows. And then I went through with a mid-tone color. So kind of a mid, mid green. <laughs> and I added just like the bulk of the leaves with the mid-tone color. And then I ended up going back over the top with a lighter shade of green for all of the highlights. And honestly, I think that this methodology worked the best so far as far as like how I've painted trees in the past. I'm not sure if this is like the right way to do it, but I think in the future, this is the methodology that I'm going to start with and hope for the best with because at least with gouache, um, it seems to be the easiest way to do it to really get the shapes down and then add the light color on top of the dark so that it kind of blends in together. One thing I hate about gouache is when I add a darker shade on top of a lighter shade, it can be really hard for me to get it to blend properly. I almost always have to go back in with the lighter shade and kind of mute out the shadows so that it blends better. And so this method kind of helped with that as far as the tree is concerned, as far as the leaves, and just making sure that it all kind of looked like <laughs> like the, the shadows weren't in the foreground, if that makes sense. It kind of added more dimension. Hopefully I'm making some form of sense here. Um, again, I <laughs> this was all a learning experience for me. 
quickly i did just want to mention that i do not recommend traveling or taking the mia himi gouache set at least not the 24 color set out on location it was really difficult to transport uh it was pretty heavy to carry and i thought that you know for what i was trying to do it just added unnecessary not stress, but bulk to the whole process. If I hadn't had the entire table all to myself, if I had a friend there or something, they wouldn't have any room for their stuff because this thing is massive. With that said, it did work very well. I like the paint. I think that it's very nice. Uh, I'm definitely going to keep trying it and continue working with it before filming a proper review video for it. However, I did appreciate that the paint was already wet. Uh, it did definitely dry out in the sun, so be aware of that as well. If you don't want your gua your jelly gouache to dry out really fast, don't bring it out in the sun because it dried pretty immediately, um, at least the top layer of paint. And so I did have to re-wet the paints a few times with the spray bottle that I brought, but I came prepared for that, so that was no, no big deal. They did re-wet very well. The palette that they come with didn't clean off completely clean, um, however, I think that that can be attributed to the fact that there's just some lasting pigment in the paint. Um, I've had this problem with plastic palettes all the time, which I think is why many artists recommend that you use a porcelain palette. I would have brought a porcelain palette, except I already had all of the bulk of the rest of the supplies that I brought my filming arm and the paint itself. So I didn't really have room to also pack a separate palette. And so this palette worked fine. It got the job done. I'm still gonna continue to use it even though it is now stained with green pigment all over. <laughs> um, so yeah, just wanted to mention that quick. And as I finish up this painting, uh, I just wanted to say that plein air painting is such a great experience. It is so much fun, and I really hope that you guys try it out. Let me know down below in the comments if you do and how your experience went. Tag me on Instagram if you're interested, and I will definitely look at, comment, like, and just react to your paintings because I love seeing all of you guys' artwork as well, and I am interested in kind of expanding to Instagram as well as YouTube. So thank you guys so much for that, and I will catch you in the outro. After, of course, a full look at the finished painting that I completed during this video. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I think that it kind of really does capture the space that I was in, and I learned a lot about using the squash, I learned a lot about painting trees, and most of all, I had a, an absolute blast painting it. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you liked this video, please give it a like. Feel free to subscribe to my channel down below. I post new art and book related content on Tuesdays and occasionally on Fridays. I would really appreciate it and I will catch you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye!